What will Disney backpedal next? Yes. The Acolyte TV show has been canceled. Yay! Yay! What? You're telling me, Sterling, that lesbian space witches <laughs> are not for you? We have recently seen the third Deadpool movie. And it it has been it's a smashing knocking success. Knocking it out of the park. Acolyte's been canceled. The Snow White movie has undergone drastic changes. When they try to appeal to the center of the road, the center of the audience, they find success. And when they appeal to their leftist investors, their activist investors, where they're investing uh, with the yeah. purpose, yeah. when they appeal to those people, they don't see financial success. Hello, and welcome to the Pop Culture Contrarian Podcast with Thomas Sterling and Andrew. Hello. Hey, everybody. Our topic today is Disney's Broke to Woke Backpedal. Backpedal! Uh, we're a little bit gleeful about this because it seems like the things we've been saying have been proven true, which mm -hmm. is always nice. But first, make sure to like and subscribe to our podcast, The Pop Culture Contrarian, on whatever your podcast format of choice is. Spotify, YouTube, Rumble. Uh, where else are we, Andrew? We're on Apple. Apple. We're on Amazon. Yeah, make sure whatever you're- All of them. We're all, Yep, we're on all of them. Comment, share, leave a review if it's like Spotify. Yep. Uh, click that notification bell on YouTube. Subscribe. We would really appreciate all the help we can get. Yes. Yeah, your input is welcomed. It yes. is. It, and it's extremely valuable. To yeah, it send it. us a message. We'd love yep. to hear your thoughts. All right. All right. So the first thing is that the Acolyte TV show, which you may remember that we've talked about a little bit, we'll get into it in a second, has been canceled. Yeah, well, they canceled it. Yay! Yay! <laughs> uh, and as the Star Wars fan who was explicitly told in every way except verbal that this show was not for me, it warms the cockles of my heart that this show got canceled. Yes. What you're telling me, Sterling, that lesbian space witches mm -hmm. are not for you? Yes, a imagine straight that. white <laughs> man? Yes, yeah. So yeah, that's what the Acolyte has at least in house, in our house, become famous for, is lesbian space witches who give birth without the need for men. Yeah. Lesbians are traditionally angry. Oh wait, communist. Is mom a communist? Communist Lesbian. lesbian space, space witches. witches. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. So they just, and like the, the director and main star was going on interviews saying it's the gayest Star Wars ever. <laughs> Gay! And celebrating that, and I don't like the gayest Star Wars ever. That's not for me. It appears a lot of people. Yeah, it like seems it. like right, that. Right, exactly. The wrong audience, maybe? Yeah. Right. Well, and that's exactly kind of the point here is they were running around with t-shirts, says the force is female and stuff, trying to win a new audience. But also, I was explicitly told online when I raised my concerns about the show, because I am engaged in the Star Wars fandom. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think anyone who listens to this show would have any idea that I like Star Wars. I was explicitly told, this show is not for you, so just don't watch it. Well, I didn't, and so did seemingly everyone else not watch it, and now it's been canceled. And ha, 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 ha. As I was reading, I think this is the lowest rated Star Wars program that Disney has produced yes. as far as a show. Yes, it certainly has abysmal viewership. Yeah. Like, no one watched this show. It has the lowest fresh eyes on a show of any. We all I've thought that raised. Jar Jar was the low point. He said, called Jar Jar Binks. Those were the good old days. It man. turns out that Jar Jar was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Relatively, compared to communist lesbian space, which is to give birth without the need for men. Yeah, he was pretty amazing. The Some of the uh, reactions from the usually predictable fans of the show, which is to say people with pronouns in their bios and with the rainbow flag on their bios as well, uh, has been, Star Wars finally tried something new. It was a big swing and it didn't land. So like, what do you even want from Star Wars? Well, I'll tell you what I don't want, and it's communist lesbian space witches who give birth without the need for men. Clearly. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of books written about Star Wars. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of story there to take from if they would care to take from it. I mean, right. the fandom, it runs deep, and yeah. it is old and established, and there are people who have been watching this since the 70s, and they've got, there's games, mm -hmm. and there's role-playing games and there's books and like you said, you know, books, Thomas. And yeah, but it's, it's all been stained by the patriarchy. Yes. Yeah. So, allegedly. Uh, and, yeah. and we talked about this when we have discussed Acolyte before, but 
the original Star Wars trilogy, where the main characters are Han, Luke, Leia, Chewie, 3PO, R2, whoever you want to include in that list, that was, okay, I guess he was all white people, but everyone connected with those movies. Because it was not made for white people, it was not made for any one particular group, it was made to be a good story, everyone could connect to it. Everyone could see themselves in Han or Luke or Leia or someone else in this story. In The Acolyte, there's no one for me to connect to because in The Acolyte, they explicitly make the Jedi problematic. And, and that's the other part of the discussion online about The Acolyte is it was just so nice to finally see a Star Wars show that didn't present the propaganda that Jedi are good and Sith are evil. Wow. Well, what's in that universe that's not the propaganda? In the universe, it's, it's the not reality. propaganda. It's reality. Yeah, it's not propaganda. I mean, the Jedi are oppressed. <laughs> Correct. The Jedi are nearly exterminated. <laughs> how just how in the world can you draw that the Jedi are somehow oppressive when they are fighting against an imperial force that is trying to actually oppress the galaxy? Right. Like when when feminists talk about the patriarchy, what they're picturing seems to be the empire under yeah. Palpatine yeah. and Vader. Yeah, well, it's it's again and Jordan Peterson has mentioned it this way before the conflation with this patriarchy mm -hmm. against the majority of right good men versus the elite 1% of powerful evil men who control things in yeah. a bad way. Right. And it's just not the same people. Right. It's not the same people. And in Star Wars, the, the divide is very clear. It's the, the Jedi are the men who don't behave that way. And the Sith are the men who do. Obviously, Jedi and Sith can both be male or female, but... To, to continue your metaphor, it's it's a very clear divide. You know, yeah. you've got the toxic males who are Vader and Palpatine. You've got the non-toxic one. Cyoclean. It's safe. It's non-toxic. And you can drink it. That's who are Ben, Obi-Wan Kenobi. The heroic Luke. ones. Yeah. yeah. Precisely. Yeah. I have one question remaining. So did the Acolyte do what it said it was going to do and make the greatest lightsaber battle <laughs> in the history of Star Wars? There are some pretty cool looking clips floating around from the Acolyte. I have not watched the show. I've watched lots about the show. I've watched clips. Um, there's some pretty cool fights where they do some interesting things. There's some more, y'all have seen Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, right? I have. There's, uh, I've never seen the movie, no. Oh, wow. Okay. I've seen, I know what it is. Like fighting on top of bamboo. Right, where they, they do the kind of, they're, clearly they're on wires and they're yeah. kind of floating through the, the sword fight. There's some of that in this, which is a kind of Eastern style for depicting sword fights and there there's like a really cool looking scene where this antagonist throws his head into an oncoming lightsaber to deflect it. Cause he's wearing a helmet that can defect deflect lightsabers apparently. So no, seems like a great muscle memory. Right. What yeah, if you're not yeah. wearing your helmet? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, it looks cool and that's, that's the point here, but no, no one is actually saying, wow, that fight scene was better than the fight scene at the end of the Phantom Menace between Obi-Wan uh, Qui-Gon Jinn and Darth Maul. That Which will, was what they claimed they were going to try to That do. will forever be the most epic. It was incredibly epic. I don't think you could ever top it. Right. Yeah. I think, I mean, for something to be epic, the story surrounding it needs to be able to uphold it as something yeah, I think significant if it's just a like point here yeah mm -hmm. if it's just like hey let's get this really cool looking lightsaber fight but there's nothing connecting it to the greater story as far as significance of the universe of star wars as far as significance then all it is is like some cool looking stuff happening without any genuine meaning behind it yeah yeah. So, right, exactly. Because in, in The Phantom Menace, there is a great deal of meaning in yeah. that final fight. And the Acolyte just does not seem to know, it didn't seem to know, thank goodness I can talk about it in the past tense, <laughs> didn't seem to know what it was trying to do for the Star Wars universe. And I think that's been the problem Disney's had essentially since The Force Awakens, is they don't know what they're trying to do. They're just throwing stuff at the wall until something sticks. Well, that what they were trying to do is gay the universe. <laughs> gay! Well, yes. That, that's what she basically said, right? This She, as a lesbian, this was her opportunity to basically infuse the message into using the Star Wars format to be able to, like, basically preach to, 
I guess, the audience in that sense. And it looks like the audience, upon seeing what it was, was saying, no thanks, I'm not interested. Yeah. Yeah, that seems to be mostly the response from the non-fanatic people like me has been, no thanks, I'm not interested, which is, I think, the appropriate response. You know, just to kind of, you, we all know kind of the Christian motivated movies that are just like terrible. (laughs) Yeah. You know, because they're focused primarily on, you know, we're Christians and we need to, and we have this idea of making it as like a gospel sharing opportunity rather than just doing a good movie. And so there's scenes where the plot comes to a screeching halt. Right. And then there's a sermon. Yeah. I didn't pay for a sermon. Right. And it, and it ends up being a lousy movie as a result because it's not focused on the actual, just the storytelling and letting the story move, move the movie. In the same sense with this woke stuff, they have the same problem. Yeah. They're so focused on the message that they throw a bunch of eye candy at it and try to make people kind of accept it as like, this is good. And and everybody watching it just sits there and rolls their eyes after wrong. Sorry, but there's no good story here. Yeah. There's no good writing here. There's, it's just, nothing's believable. I, it's not, it's not entertainment. I think right. the main difference though, between those two, when you go to see the Christian flick, you know what you're going right. to see. Yeah. This stuff is like injecting it and trying to trying put to change the medicine stuff, in yeah. with the cat food. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> well, that is that. So we can, I think, wrap up our acolyte discussion, but largely that is what the left has been trying to do is they're trying to take something that has an established definition. And this is one of their classic moves and then remove the, the meat of that definition, insert their own thing and then say, see, it's still the same thing. It's got the same name. It's a trap. And that's what they've done with Star Wars. It's what they're, I guarantee they're going to try to do with Rings of Power as it continues on. It's what they're going to do. It's what they've done, you know, with just plain old definitions. What is marriage? Marriage. You know, and, and it's just a classic move of theirs. And it, the goal is to yeah. try to slip it in past people's radars. Right. Yeah. So they, you know, slip it in past the radar and, and brainwash your children. That's the goal. Right. So now next on our list yes. featuring Disney movies, we, you and I, have recently seen the third Deadpool movie. Yes. Deadpool and Wolverine. And it it has it's been a smashing knocking success. knocking it out of the park. It's This will probably be the biggest movie of the year. I don't know if it's surpassed Inside, Inside Out, Out 2, 2 yet. Well, this is the main point with this one is the contrast. And yes. this is the back pedal, right? right. Yes. So this represents Disney seeing okay and also i would argue that this also represents other studios who've been putting out mm-hmm. the same kind of tactic that you just described thomas yeah. and you ter- uh, sterling mm-hmm. about trying to say hey it's got the same name it's the same thing they have done the opposite and said let's give the fans what they want yeah yeah, yeah. i mean i in in preparation for this i'm no deadpool fan fight you now how are you? Mm-hmm. I had not seen any of the movies until the week before I watched the third one, and I watched the uh, first and second one just to like get myself up to mm-hmm. speed for this one, and then went in to watch this third one. And I mean, they're enjoyable within what they are. I mean, they're crass, yeah. and you got to be ready for the. They're crass and they're gratuitous and violence and all these things. It's all has a comedic element to it. Yeah. I mean, when you have Ryan Reynolds as your, you know, your lead, you're going to get that. And he pulls it off very well. In fact, I don't know that another actor is going to be able to do Deadpool after Ryan Reynolds puts it down. No, I I think you're right. It's almost like he is Deadpool. Well, their Ryan Reynolds personality very closely matches the comics Deadpool character. So it was just a match made in heaven. And you had to have, the only guy I think you can do who can do Wolverine justice, Mm -hmm. which is, you know, Hugh Hugh Jackman Jackman. and the two of them, I think that's what put this movie into the stratosphere as far as, you know, compared to the, 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 the first two, Mm -hmm. because this is, it was just, it's kind of in my mind after watching the first two and the third one, I know I disagreed with, or you disagreed with me Mm -hmm. on this a little bit, but I, from my perception, the, the third one is the best of them. Yeah, It just has so many of those elements and it's almost like it just got a little bit more, I hate to use this word, professional 
feeling or or refined. Maybe that's a better way. It just got a little bit more refined, not as far as storytelling necessarily, but just the way it looked was a little crisper, cleaner. The cuts were a little bit better. The timing was a little bit better. Everything just felt just, it's almost like the movie stepped up a little bit. And I guess this is what we have expected Disney to do to movies when Disney acquired like, you know, the MCU or when they, or I guess they started the MCU. No, they, no, they, they acquired, acquired it. it. Yeah. And, and it, Star Wars. Yeah. And Star Wars. We were expecting this level of, because Disney has a reputation, have always had a reputation being great mm -hmm filmmakers yeah uh, and so this to me felt like okay this is what i expect from a disney film yeah. i'm sorry how did you think i was expected to guess that well this this well not a disney in film past. uh in terms of content but yeah in terms yeah. of quality and, I suppose. And, yeah, yeah quality because I, again we should very much stress deadpool yes. is rated r for a reason yes. it's a good reason it's not uh, for kids it's not, it's for, not kids. for kids there's Probably now not even for teenagers right as of Deadpool and Wolverine, in the MCU, there have been 119 uses of the F word. He liked to say the F word. One of those was in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and 118 of them were in Deadpool and Wolverine. And every time he said the F word, people, for some reason, well, they'd cheer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that should yeah, give that you a you point it. taken. Yeah. yeah. What I've been telling people is if they liked the first Deadpool, two Deadpool movies, they'll like this movie. If you don't. This is not for you. You won't that's, like it. That's good. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the the reason we're talking about Deadpool and Wolverine, aside from the fact that it's been a huge success, it's crossed a billion dollars already, is it does not have really any noticeable woke anything, any preaching, nothing like that. Right. Which is what you would expect from Deadpool. It's not what you expect from Disney in 2024. Right. They stayed true, to Disney's credit, they stayed true to Deadpool's character. Yes. I mean, that's exactly, he's irreverent. That's yeah. one of his main elements. Yeah. And uh, allegedly, the f this huge success has shaken up Disney's corporate side. And they are saying, okay, we have to change course on this stuff. Yeah. This makes money. Right. I will say, <laughs> I don't know how much credit De Disney gets for this. I know Ryan Reynolds and the director, I believe, both fought extremely hard to make this movie as it was made. And, and they had to fight Disney to make that happen. Um, Imagine but, fighting your parent organization to make money. Yeah. But actually, <laughs> that's not uncommon with studios. And when, when you do fight them and then prove it like this, mm -hmm. that gives you even more leverage in the future. Well, yes. And so I think, because I mean, famously, both Steven Spielberg and George Lucas early on had to fight with their studios when they were making some of their iconic movies. And mm -hmm. they almost had to finally convince them, get the, what the funding or whatever the time they needed to be able to do what they wanted to do. And then the proof was in the pudding as these movies became mm -hmm. just, you know, box office, you know, busters. I mean, they just yeah. blew it up. So I guess that's not the right word buster, but anyway, I think that will actually help. Yeah. Uh, it's a good thing that Disney didn't just write a check and say, Oh yeah, we, we totally trust it. I think, they needed this course correction in that mm -hmm. sense as well. Yes. So that's good. Right. So that is kind of the thing we've been noticing, the trend. Acolyte's been canceled. The We're going to get into this in a, minute, in a minute, but the Snow White movie has undergone drastic changes. Uh, Deadpool and Wolverine's been a huge success. Inside Out 2 was a huge success. They've, they've been seeing that when they try to appeal to the center of the road, the center of the audience, in Deadpool and Wolverine's case, the center of the over 18 audience, they find success. And when they appeal to their leftist investors, their, and this is a term I'm seeing thrown around a lot, activist investors, where they're investing uh, with the yeah. purpose yeah. of trying to sway the kind of content. When they appeal to those people, they don't see financial success. But when they appeal to middle America, they see financial success. Well, when you're dealing with a, with a brand or a story, it's, it's well-developed. The people yeah. already know the, that has a fan base and you're going to, Take it upon yourself to make something, to, to put that story into a format like a movie or something. You better get it right because yes. if you don't, you're going to have people turn on it immediately. Because it's mm -hmm. one thing, like you could you could say this, last year's number one hit, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. 
was an example of a movie that besides the dolls, there wasn't like this story that Barbie fans necessarily were expecting right. the movie to, to tell. So it gave a lot of freedom to tell the story that was told. Yeah. I mean, and because they could reference the toys and the nostalgia of showing the different Barbies and the different, like the cars and the houses and everything, yeah. there was that nostalgia for the audience, but there wasn't a story that the audience was expecting that Barbie had to fit into and they deviated from it. And so then they said, oh, this isn't Barbie. Right. So that they have, they didn't have that pitfall to avoid, yes. but also they, they treated dolls and the way girls play with Barbie dolls very lovingly. Very, they paid a lot of attention to, to the fact of how these dolls are used. Yeah. And I think that's why it resonated so and strongly. It and it was directed and made by women yeah. who themselves, some of them for sure, played with dolls and yeah. understand that whole element of being a young girl playing with dolls. And so they could naturally relate to that. So if someone's coming in and saying they're going to make a Star Wars movie that didn't grow up watching Star Wars right. or care and, anything about Star Wars. And that's what the director Wars. of Acolyte said. Is she, yeah. And the director of the Ray movie that's upcoming also, these are not Star Wars fans that yeah. are being put in charge of Star Wars projects. But speaking of listening to the fans or not, yes. Uh -huh. Before we get to Snow White, let's let's go to Borderlands. So yeah. this is a movie. So we're leaving Disneyland. Yes, we're leaving Disneyland. <laughs> this is Lionsgate. I think made this movie. Borderlands is based on a video game that's very dystopian. <laughs> think Mad Max, and you're in the right ballpark, and it's a shooter, so you're blowing up monsters and taking their guns and stuff. Yeah. And there are, are things that are Borderlands and there are things that are not Borderlands and the fans know that. And this movie that they've made does not match what the fans wanted from a movie. And it's turning out to be maybe a historic flop. If this picture's a flop, I'm going to look into real life. Well, it's interesting, you know, in the video game world, mm -hmm. there have been several video games in recent memory that have been turned into movies mm -hmm. or show series or yep. those kinds of things, adaptations, I guess you'd call them. And there are, again, examples of those who have done really well. So the Super Mario video game yeah. did really, really well. Yeah, crossed a billion dollars. And it stayed true to what the fans expected. Yeah. Halo is one that did not. Yeah. Broke all kinds of rules, like Master Chief showing his face. Mm -hmm. And Borderlands is going the way of Halo, maybe worse. Probably Ooh, definitely worse. worse. Halo saw enough success to get a second season. Yeah. But it has now been canceled. But it's this same idea of I'm going to create this either for, uh, well, it's for a different audience. Right. Or to try and somehow influence the current audience. So you're just trying to leverage a name to your own bent. Right. Exactly. It's, it's basically they have a... Mm more or less original story idea, but they don't have the faith to throw it out there on its own. They have to uh, take some name and slap it on there. And and I think that's what they did with Borderlands. They put a mask on it. <laughs> exactly. I think that's what the Acolyte is. It's not a Star Wars story. And yeah, like Halo, like you were saying, I would say with Halo especially, there's so much lore, there's so many video games, there's so many fans, because this was the biggest video game in the world for many years, at least in America. So maybe not the world. But... I think if you just gotten Halo video game fans to watch the show, it would have been a wild success. But they deliberately turned those people off by breaking important rules to the fans. And turns out when you ignore your fan base and try to a attract audiences who've never cared about this, this project, you don't see wild success. That's true. Do you think one of the reasons this happens is there's this constant drive within within the creative sphere, like, the movie industry, or you see it probably in, in well, let's stick to the movie industry. Mm -hmm. Artists have this natural desire to want to create and be known for creating something different or unique. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a set story that already exists and all the trappings that have, that are associated with that, is there a temptation for these directors and stuff to come in and say, we're going to put a whole new spin on it because they have this desire to be creative. Yeah. Is that what's happening in getting them caught by not really understanding maybe the story to begin with or the universe that's been created to begin with and then and then breaking cardinal rules within their adaptation of the story that 
automatically offends fans. Yeah. And so then they're, they're left with basically doing something that because it's not true to the actual universe, it ends up being like not considered uh, i guess real to it or yeah it's it, bad fan fiction is yeah, usually the term that gets yeah, thrown at bad, something like that i i i wonder if it's just this this is just drive to be so creative that you have this arrogance of saying because i'm creative master or whatever mm-hmm. or want to be i have to put my own mark and see it in my own way and then express that to the fans and if yeah. the fans are rejecting it and then they get upset because the fans have rejected it but you know one sense if you start with something that already has existed and is well developed, you can't really be that creative with it. One, I, I think that's yeah. definitely part of it. Well, one, we, one might call it creative license. More appropriately, I would call it ego. <laughs> well, yeah, yes, so that's, that's what that's I was going to say. I'm saying, yeah, I think especially with shows like the Halo show and Rings of Power and other kind of fantasy sci-fi stuff, I know there's been this big desire, and this has been explicitly stated at times, to become the next like Game of Thrones, which was, I think, probably the last really big crossover hit across large audiences. And so instead of saying, we have this Halo story, let's tell it as best we can. Let's make this, let's fulfill its potential. They're saying, we want it to be that. And so if its potential doesn't automatically lend itself to being that, we have to change it until it can be the next big, huge crossover hit that everyone likes. Do you think they also don't recognize the, the size of the potential fan base. And so therefore they just kind of ignore them as a significant enough faction to, to please. I think it's probably a little bit more complicated. I think they recognize there's a large fan base for something like Halo or Star Wars or Lord of the Rings. And they recognize that pleasing those dedicated fans is very difficult. And so rather than try to do that, they say, we're just going to try to appeal to main audience. So they, they say that's too hard to do. Or sometimes they might say it's never going to happen. You're never going to please everybody. And so they don't even bother trying to appeal to those people, which you have to at least try to appease those people. Well, I mean, I, I hear you on that. But the thing that's confusing is the fact that they're taking these well-loved and developed stories to adapt to film. So my question is, well, why would you do that if you then, it, then when once you get it, you're like, that's eh, not good enough. We're going to change a bunch of stuff. That's where I get confused by this other than you have an agenda, like we've talked mm-hmm. about in the past, then, and you're just taking advantage of something that's well loved and liked and said, we're going to, we're going to fix it. Yeah. And they're fixing it ends up making it into a disaster. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, it certainly is confusing. And I know fans all over the world right. are like, why, why did you do this? Yeah. They didn't do it with Deadpool and Wolverine. No. And that one's. And that's because I think Ryan Reynolds had enough clout to fight yeah. and make it happen. And that's what you have to have right. for all of these projects. You have to mm-hmm. have someone who loves the, the, who is one of the fans. I'm your biggest fan. All right. So the question is, are they going to do it with Snow White? Yes. So wrapping up here with Snow White. Well, we talked about Snow White before. Right. When Disney was going to release it, and so was the Daily Wire. Yeah, this they have past versions. spring it was supposed to come out. And then there was all kinds of backlash from a presser with the uh, main actress. or Rachel Ziegler. Actor, yeah. I don't know what's proper. You know. I just mean that it's no longer 1937, and we absolutely wrote a Snow White. That she's is not going to be yeah. saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince, and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. All that stuff's on its head these days. <laughs> Basically, they're like, we're going to have to revamp this thing because mm-hmm. we're getting super negative feedback from fans. Yeah. And then Daily Wire was like, well, we're going to swoop in and save the day with our version. Mara, Mara. Um, who is fair? Of them all. Mm-hmm. Then everything got delayed. So we've seen that Disney has released their March, I think in March 25. Yeah. March of 2025 will be the release for Snow White. And it's kind of been changed a lot. A lot. So now instead of the multicultural, gender diverse hobos, hobos. <laughs> they've got some real dwarves, it yeah. seems. No, they're not, we're, they're not real. But, well, yeah. 
That's the, part. They're they're all CGI. Well, they're CGI, but they look like the the dwarves. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They look like the characters. They're from the CGI movie. dwarves. They're not real dwarves. Yeah. Right. But yeah, they look like the original characters. What I'm trying to say because what you're referencing <laughs> is originally there was a set photo released of tall, short, black, white, male, female, seven dwarfs, and you know a dwarf. If there's one thing a dwarf can't be, it's tall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and that got so much flack on top of the diff- a different thing with Rachel Ziegler where she got in trouble for her words. That image got so much flack that they decided to make CGI dwarves instead. Yeah. Um, so now they're going to do the, you know, Snow White and the seven CGI dwarves. Yes. And release it in March 25. I'm curious to see... If they keep the woke messaging, I already mm-hmm. think part of it will be based on the trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also can't wait to see if Daily Wire is going to release theirs at the same time. Yeah. Well, all I could find is Daily Wire says 2025. No, Daily so. Wire, I think, is being strategic about this. Yeah. I, I think they they decided this is this is a competition. And they decided they threw down the gauntlet and we're going to we're going to meet them. Yeah. And. It's really going to be interesting. Now, will Daily Wire actually pull in more money than this Snow White? I doubt it. Yeah, it's highly, it's highly unlikely. Yeah. But will Daily Wire's movie or rendition of it actually be better than this one? That, there's a good possibility. Could there's be. a good possibility. Now, I think it's so CGI. I mean, when you see the trailer, I do believe, as I've seen some people criticizing this, saying, They think this movie was completely filmed in front of a green screen. Yeah. And the act, the the life actors basically are just, they're just on in a big studio and then everything else is CGI because I mean, that's what, that's what it looks like. Well, they had to just redo the whole thing. Yeah. So, so we're talking about this because a trailer just came out and uh, we may, we'll include that at least as a link. And uh, so, is it really live action? Live action. Well, that well, that was the question with the Lion King movie as well, <laughs> no, where it was they're making these live action versions yeah. of their classics, and they made Lion King live action with CGI lions <laughs> and voiceovers. It's I like, know. How is this different from animation? Yeah. But the I think the thing that we noticed in the trailer is that so they're in the in the classic Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs cartoon from the 1930s, Snow White shows up at the dwarves' house and they've been mining all day and she cleans up the house. And that's kind of how she earns her keep is by being the the maid, basically. And in the trailer, what you see is she's singing or whistling whistle while you work, just like the, the cartoon. But instead of doing any work herself, she tasks each dwarf mm. with an individual task to clean up the house. Yeah. That's not... Like, what value does she provide? Is my question. Dwarves Bo- are the patriarchy. Yeah. Bo- yeah. Boss White and and the Seven Servants. I yeah. mean, that's oh. what it is. Yeah, yeah. So we're just looking forward to that next year, I guess, to see if it's going to be. We'll see how far did they backpedal. That's how the big far question here. I clearly they did. I won't be surprised if the movie we get is basically scene for scene the same as the cartoon. I won't be surprised. I think there are elements that even in that preview were hinting at that, but then there were some that were not. So it, I, I'm not sure how it's how yeah, it's going to be. It'll be interesting. Like like you pointed out, her assigning the tasks mm-hmm. during that song is definitely different from the original movie. Right. Yeah. So that's just that's just interesting. But generally, the trend we've seen and that that we're excited to share with you is that this cultural phenomenon of preaching at us through movies seems to be on the way out. Yeah. Fingers crossed on that one. At least it's backpedaling. At least it's backpedaling. They're maybe they're recouping. They're gonna figure out how to uh, come at us again. But for now, at least it's being pushed back. And that's just nice. We just like Yeah. That. Well, I think if th- if the bottom line matters, you know, mm-hmm. for these these studios, which is usually the number one issue for them, like, mm-hmm. you know. We're in this to make money. They're going to notice movies that make the money and they're going to notice movies that don't make the money. And they're going to notice there's some, at least our argument is some very obvious reasons why. Yeah. Thematically. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess, I guess that's most of our topics. We've talked about the acolyte and it's cancellation. Woohoo. We talked about Deadpool and Wolverine, which catered to the fans and has been a wild success. 
Uh, we talked about Borderlands, other video game shows, Halo, that did not cater to the fans and have not been successes. Uh, and then of a little bit of Snow White there at the end. Just an update for the movie that's coming next year. What will Disney backpedal next? Yes. <laughs> Join us when we know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll bring you the news when we know it. All right. This has been the Pop Culture Contrarian with Thomas Sterling and Andrew. We're brought to you by the Patriot Post, which is the oldest conservative news digest on the web. It's right, and it's free. Be sure to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. See ya.